come out and do a lot of these and uh how many little ones do you get to see out of these a surprising amount i know i I'm, love you demon children yeah <laughs> i know you got you're so much braver than i was yeah. and am <laughs> well, well okay th th that's a great place to start uh, are you horror fans yourselves yes yeah, yeah definitely so so w what is it like the because you, you've been with both movies now we're we're only in the first one. The first. You, we briefly appear in the second one. We're yeah. credited we were as never, being in the second one. We were never one. on set though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so when you get cast in the first one and nobody's thinking this is gonna be the phenomenon that it is, what do you what are you thinking? Especially going through some of those uh, pretty terrifying, forgive the pun, uh, death scenes there. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before, but the everyone who's a part of the second one knew that they were coming into an established franchise. They knew that there was a following. They knew that there was a fan base. We just thought we were making some indie movie no one was ever going to see. No, yeah, no, it, it, it's it's really true. Like I, I'm like the audition process for the second film was really competitive. They like wanted to do this. We both almost didn't, not because it was bad, but just because we had bigger jobs. And I remember when um, Damien. Uh, when we were shooting like the hacksaw scene that night, Damien was like, are you ready to make horror movie history? And I looked at him and I was like, shut up, Damien. Nobody's gonna watch this movie. Like, okay, ego. You know what I mean? Someone's a narcissist, but uh, but here we are. So I guess shows what the hell I know. You know? So it's, it's gotta kind of feel a little bit uh, akin to um, like when the Blair Witch took off and nobody knew, mm -hmm. thought that that was gonna be like the hit it is. Um, when you come out and you start doing the conventions like this, what is, a, what, what is the one thing you guys are taking away from all this? I mean, my favorite thing about conventions is that when we make movies, we're kind of just throwing them out into the ether and we can talk online a little bit, but we really don't get to have the, we don't get to see the impact of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And when we're here, all of you come and talk to us and we get to actually hear about your experiences watching it and consuming it and, and where you're at in your lives and what it means for you. And it, and it makes it so much more real and we get to see the impact of what we're doing, which is, you know we rarely get to and is very cool. That's my favorite part of conventions. Yeah, I think that's like the most rewarding part of the whole thing. And I think also the community around it, like so, uh, for a while, I think we didn't really know what to make of the conventions, but a lot of the people that we've met at them, fans, also other creatives have just become part of our kind of family and friends. And like, that's, that's so rewarding, you know? You have a place, you have a home, no matter how weird you are, or how uncomfortable it may seem. And I think that's the best part of this. I don't know any other genre that really has that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, so both being horror fans, was it, and you said you both almost passed on this. Well, we both had scheduling. Yeah, it wasn't right. that we didn't want to do it. Yeah. We were just on bigger jobs. So Damien had to shoot around us. Yeah, so some, one of my favorite fun facts about the movie, and I'm, sur I'm sure some of you already know this, is that the scene where I'm watching her die, we were never in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We shot everything of me reacting and then everything of her dying on completely different days. Yeah. And there was there was some overlap for us filming, but that day was not one of them yeah. because I was on I like wrapped bye bye or sorry, I wrapped Terrifier. 24 hours later was shooting Bye Bye Man and you were filming Chuck. And yeah. so we were both on our first studio films at the time, and so he was working around our schedules, essentially. So it's, we didn't yeah. pass because we didn't want to do it. We right. were just, but he, we, he found a way to make it work because we were each the only ones for our roles. Like, no one else was ever considered. Yeah. <laughs> there, it, again, it was so different. It's like night and day, the experiences we had and the experiences the second film had. In some ways, I think they've all gone through their fair share of chaos, but, yeah. like, um, but like, in terms of how we got involved and everything like that, it was yeah. just the two of us I think I came in for what was supposed to be like a chemistry test with David and he wasn't there and um I read with Phil who's our executive producer yeah who's a producer and so I saw she was just showing so, yeah. she found her audition tape yesterday and she like sits on Phil's lap the producer to do the scene in the cafe and you can see it's just clearly the best day of Phil's life yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you and, see him like leave his body. And it was like such a funny thing because I thought like it wasn't even like an audition process. It was like, nope, this is the only person yeah, we and, have for this. <laughs> and mine, I like I originally, I didn't even audition for Terrifier. I auditioned for a movie called The Ninth Circle, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen is a short film that Damien made years and years ago. And he was trying to get it made as a feature. And I read for that. It never got made. And he said, well, I have this other film. Would you want to do this one instead? And I read the script and I said, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so the first time you watch the movie, what, what's the first point where you're like, is there, is there a point in the first movie where you're like, oh my God, that, that, that's a lot. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think we all... <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> I, I actually wrote about this for Fangoria recently. I can't post it right now during the strike, but it is up. Um, and it we before it did Netflix, before anything, we had really one screen. We had a festival screening and then one like public screening, and it was at uh, Lincoln Center, which is if you don't know in New York, that's like where the opera and the ballet also like, perform. Nor normally, a place of high class. <laughs> yeah, and. and and yes. so, and it screened there, and um, true to my normal form, I was late, so I missed the beginning, yeah. but also... <laughs> so she saw the movie for the first time in its entirety recently. Yeah, um, <laughs> but, but, um, but they, um, the theater sold out, and I remember, like, that was while people were, like, sitting on the floor... And when I came in, um, you know, I sat in the back and there was, um, we got to, when we got to the hacksaw scene, the, everyone's screaming and freaking out and stuff. And then it was just silent. And I remember being like, oh, fuck. <laughs> we went too far. Like, this is, yeah, like, this did not go over well. And I had come from trauma, so I was used to people, like, being kind of crazy, like, doing it. Yeah. But I was like, this was this is it. We went too far. And then someone made a joke, and everyone started cheering. And that was like, the, then it was like, okay, but there was definitely a moment where I was like, fuck. <laughs> I just fucked up real bad, yeah. didn't I? You know? Yep. Amazing. Um, so, and you guys are all like huge fans here as well. So I don't want to monopolize everyone's time as well. So um, we're going to open up for questions as well. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw up your hand there. Yeah, sure. We got a mic here too, if you want to come up to it, or you can do it from there. <laughs> we go way back. Please don't spoilers because we haven't seen it. Oh, sure. Oh, that's well, sorry. That's, we just spoiled something be, pretty. Yeah, big. might be in the wrong place. <laughs> this might be the wrong panel for you. <laughs> Everybody survives. Don't worry. <laughs> it's a lovely film. It's yeah, lovely the film. final it's girl is exactly who you think it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, you know, a holiday film. Yeah. It's a rom-com <laughs> about us falling in love. Mm. That's really what happened on the set of this film. <laughs> yes. It's just right before Drew Barrymore and Anne, Adam Sandler show up. It's yes. great. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, any other questions, anybody? All right. What was it like for you guys seeing art in full costume the very first time? So it's it's not as shocking as it is necessarily when you watch the movie because we saw the entire process and at the time I think he's gotten it down to 45 minutes but at the time it took I think two hours or an hour and a half to put his makeup on and we were shooting in this creepy abandoned building there was no money there were no resources and so it's just Damien our director per, you know p applying prosthetics to David on the same floor where uh, the crafty and meals were the same yeah. room where we were all changing the same room where makeup was being done so you saw the whole process so it wasn't as shocking and then you know people will often ask well was it scary working with David and the answer is no because the moment he opens his mouth he's you've all met him like he's not a scary person <laughs> at all I could absolutely beat him in a fight and <laughs> he said this too he knows we all know uh, I think which, every woman on this film would kick David, <laughs> yes, absolutely. David's ass at any given time. Yeah, the real, really the scariest part was the where we were filming because it was an actual abandoned building. And so in order to get to the porta potty, you had to walk through rooms full of abandoned cars and use needles and use condoms. And it was just like a the, the location itself was, was creepier than anything that we were doing. Yeah. Good times, good times. <laughs> Follow that up. Uh, trauma bonded. <laughs> All right, uh, creepy mask face. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant. I have two questions for you. If you could pick any other horror genre you would be in, what would it be in and why? Any other genre or any other horror subgenre? Uh, horror subgenre. I, well, we've both done other types of horror films. Uh, <laughs> now's a great time for me to do a shameless plug. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
she, she, they're a plant. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> there's a film that uh, that I star in called Faceless After Dark that I also wrote, and Katie has a cameo in. It's amazing. And, thank you. Not the cameo, the film. <laughs> <laughs> the cameo is also amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it's called Faceless After Dark. It's on the on the festival circuit right now. It just premiered at Fright Fest in London on the IMAX screen to 730 people. It was amazing. And it's at a couple more festivals right now. If you're curious about them, I post about them on my Instagram. And it comes out on streaming next year. And this is a long-winded way of saying um, it's horror, but it's a very different type. It's meta. It's more psychological thriller. It's It's... Very, very different, and, yeah. and I'm I'm proud of it. It makes a lot of comments about horror itself. It's very sort of um, self-referential, self-aware. Yeah. And the second question is filming your scenes separately. Like, how did do you guys have a mental process of like filming your scenes separately since you guys were in the room? Not to spoil who I've not seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I just want to know, like, because I thought when I saw the movie, I thought you were both in the same room, but now that you've told us, how, like, did you have a mental set of like, how you envision each other's characters being separate from seeing the terrifying faces that yeah. you did? I mean, we had met before, so yeah. even though we didn't do that scene together, we had already shot a number of scenes together. And so the nice thing was that we had already bonded and formed a friendship and are still very close to this day. And so we spent a lot of time prior to that huddled over the one tiny space heater <laughs> and like under a blanket and had already kind of formed a friendship. So it made it you know, yeah. easier to visualize this this person that you cared about and something happening to them. And a lot of times like when, you, when you're... It is actually a privilege to even sometimes have your scene partner when you're doing close-ups and things like that, depending on the scale of a project, Some, especially with like anything that requires any sort of like VFX or, or stunt work. Sometimes it's just not possible to have everybody in the same room. So you you are, you are do learn as an actor to how to kind of make it work. Um, but I think particularly in that scene, for me, I was more focused on the safety of it. So like, because- <laughs> Or the lack thereof. Yeah, so like what you're seeing and like my, I think it was probably more challenging for her because her character is watching it. My character is dying. So <laughs> it's like a little- <laughs> a little bit different. And yeah. she was actually hanging upside down and actually naked in a freezing room. And yeah. like, you know, you you respond, there's, uh, there, I, I mean, there are schools of, of acting training that rely a lot on like sense memory and like your environment and like, mm -hmm. what what do you feel? What do you smell? What do you, you know, uh, reacting to, to, yeah, to all of your senses. And all yeah. of that was easy to, to pull from. Cause I, and I was actually tied up, which I asked to be, yeah. um, to help me like struggle more and make it more believable. So that all helps too. Yeah, I mean, typically you're not actually hanging upside down um, in, a, in a 20 degree room. Um, <laughs> No, it's not realistic. It's real. Um, like, um, I, I, that was my blood. Like, I, you know, like I always like say this, like, and I think there is like there's this weird like framing around this that people call what a lot of what happened in that film stunts. And while there is some stunt choreography in there, particularly in like what Jenna does in in the in the combat scenes, um, that scene that I do is not a stunt. That is me actually hanging up upside down by my ankles um if it's a stunt there are like other <laughs> things yeah in place. i mean we both did do all 100 percent of our own stunts yeah. they didn't have money for stunt doubles and we also both usually do our own stunts mm -hmm. anyway uh but also you know we were all earlier on in our careers and would probably do things was, differently yeah. now yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, I mean i think damien feels the same way we've yeah. all talked about it pretty openly but yeah i mean it, you run a big risk of things going wrong and we're very lucky that only a some smaller things went wrong, um, yeah. but yeah, like there, there's no like no trickery there. That is that is real. Yeah, yeah. Now, how is that transition? You know, uh, going from, you know, kind of that indie feel, and you know, like because you, you, you're you're doing the gorilla filming almost, like yeah. trauma, right? Yeah. You know, like the, that's right at Uncle Lloyd's uh, mm -hmm. his sketchbook, right? Like you just yeah. go film it and get permission later. Yeah. Um, but going from that and then moving, uh, like uh, you guys said, you were an onset of Terrifier two at all, or no, no. 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 But I, but I we mean, both but worked on big I, budget and I, stuff and since yeah, then. So what what is that like? Like that transition though for you, going from that kind of the the smaller to the bigger. Well, is there more freedoms? I think any any filmmaker actor in general will tell you that often you do both, even throughout your career. There are times when you're working on huge shows. Um, like I think prior to doing some of the indie horror stuff, I had done like 
Gossip Girl, which was like a giant show at the time, and like and um and Jenna has done giant TV shows as well, where there are these like behemoth things, and it's very t- you're kind of just a little cog in this giant yeah. machine, mm-hmm. and then you get to do and then the indie stuff is like you usually have a little bit more creative freedom, which is really nice, but again, you don't always have the resources or the right. time or the ability yeah. to be together, so they both have plus and minuses, and most people will do both throughout their careers and back and forth, yeah, yeah. no matter how. How successful something is. Yeah, and I, I basically exactly what she said. Of there, I would agree that there are there are there's a different types of freedom to both. Because mm-hmm. like she said, you have much a much bigger voice. You can have much more influence and agency on the indie stuff. But you have less time. You have less money. You have way fewer people, way fewer resources than on the big ones. You know, on uh-huh. like on on Renfield, we spent maybe a week or two filming the same scene. Mm-hmm. Whereas Terrifier, we were doing multiple scenes a day. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, on, on the big stuff, there's, a, you know, a separate unit entirely sometimes for stunts and, and for things like that. And, and all the jobs are so specialized, whereas on the indie films, you really cut your teeth because you have to learn how to do everything yeah. and how to wear multiple hats or a really tall one like that one in the back. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I will. I do always say that, like, um, it, you learn a lot from both, and it's yeah. so it's so critical to do both. But like, particularly with like the trauma stuff, I always call that like film boot camp because right. you're doing everything, mm. and 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 sometimes that's kind of a gift, especially when you're early in your career. You learn a lot. You'll learn so much, um, but it definitely makes it harder um, on all on all levels, from the time the film is being funded to the even getting it out. Um, so it's just you know both are, both have yeah. been positive. You know, on on indie films, everyone is doing a million jobs, mm-hmm. and then on on some like Renfield, for example, there's one person who their job is just to put Nicolas Cage's acrylic nails on. There's yeah. one person yeah. whose whose yeah. job is only to like come in and squeeze eye drops into your contact lenses when you're a creature. You know, yeah. it's so so specialized, and there's a necessity for that, and it creates millions of jobs, and you have this army where everyone can just focus on what they're doing. Yeah. So there really are pluses and minuses right. to both. Yeah, because yeah, like, it's almost like being in a factory, like once you're on the right. big the big one, but at, when you're on the indies, uh, the way I'm reading it, yeah. it's more of a family feel, though, yeah. right? Because everybody's kind of You can still it. have a family yeah. on the big right. stuff, but it's a different type of family. Right. Yeah. Where, uh, you know, on, on Terrifier, we, we could say, like, oh, I want to change this line and say it to Damien. He's like, yeah, go for it. On the bigger ones, it's, you know, I want to change a line, and if you're, I mean, like on WandaVision, it is, like, yeah. it's got, got to go through 50 different people of approval before you can do something like yeah. that, yeah. you know? There's yeah. a lot more cooks in the kitchen. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've been on sets where, like, um, I remember the director coming in one day on, and, you know, I'm doing, like, a final fitting of a costume, and um, he introduces himself, and he, he said, you know, someone on this set might give you some notes about, like, dialect work or this, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I welcome it. He's like, no, 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 you're not understanding. We don't have time to change anything. You're going to smile and say yes and do what we told you to do. <laughs> like, that's, that's, like, that's how it goes, you know, and, and it's just, it's kind of like that. That's There's a lot more money on the line, and yeah. so the stakes are a lot higher. Yeah. yeah. So what is it like for you now, um, you have a film under your belt now. A couple of films now. Many films. Oh, many, <laughs> many, films. Many, many decades films. of so, films. So, yeah. so, 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 talk to me about that as well. Then, uh, like being on both sides of things. Like it's one thing to get directions, but what is it like to have to not only because a lot of people don't understand with directing, it's not just being on set and saying cut and yeah. action. Like you're in charge of everything like yeah. every little aspect um can you speak a little bit to that and how much of that is, have you taken from the acting world and vice versa like how much have you brought back over into the acting world yeah absolutely i mean we've both worked behind the camera and obviously i'll just speak for myself i was spent years assistant directing where you're building the schedules and uh, and communicating with every department and then i also did a bunch of producing and i've like like zeus mentioned have also done a lot of directing now i've directed something like 17 short projects and there's one that I'm actually also in called Spray Bottle that comes out next year which I'm really excited about but you learn a ton I mean I like jumping around because people will often ask like if you could choose what would you choose and I say don't want to because you learn so much as an actor you learn okay when I get this type of direction it's helpful and this type is not 
And you're, if you really pay attention, I mean, like I'll often advise anyone who's interested in film to just be an extra or be a PA where you're the bottom of the totem pole and no one respects you, but you have no responsibility or very little responsibility. And so you can watch everything and take in everything and say, okay, that's what this person does. That, that, that's what this person does. This is how much time this takes. This is how, this is what effective communication looks like. Cause that's basically all yeah. directing is, is just communicating the same vision over and over and over again yeah. and getting it from your brain to be something tangible. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree. I think er, very, very early in my career, so it's like well over 10 years ago now, but someone, I was negotiating one of my own contracts and I've been doing this since I was like a little kid. And the person said to me, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just an actor. And he was They're wrong. dead now. He <laughs> was wrong. I, I murdered him. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but... Um, he was totally wrong, but I never wanted anyone to ever be able to say that to me again. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, around that time, I just started taking whatever job I could on any set to kind of just get an understanding. So I was like, I've worked as a PA, I've worked in effects makeup, I've worked in casting. Um, now I produce and, and write and I think, um, and, and everything from like commercial projects to like HBO docs and, and things like that. And I think, it's made me um, a better actor um, and a much more efficient actor and vice versa. It's made me better with talent when I'm, when we're working with the talent because I understand so many different facets of it, it just makes you technically sharper and you're always learning and the medium is always evolving. So you're always evolving. So it's, I think the death of any sort of creative is limiting themselves to one skill set because yeah. you can't fully, you know, be a holistic filmmaker mm -hmm. and creative otherwise. Yeah, and even seeing what's missing too of, you know, I remember when I did much more um, like assistant directing producing work, even little things like, oh, this this actor is in a tiny costume because we always fucking are and <laughs> they're cold and no one is like bringing them a coat yeah. in between takes and they're clearly suffering. Like even just little things of like, oh, this is, you know, now intimacy coordination is this whole industry which is great and we really need it but that was not the case up until very recently yeah. of like we're doing a very sensitive scene where someone is naked or it's like emotionally uh, triggering material and things like that and even just being sensitive to the experience of not just the people performing but everyone around them and being more aware of like n what needs needs to be met and yeah. like how you can prevent problems ahead of time yeah it makes a huge difference merkins are cool yeah, Merkins are a good thing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, are always thing. pasties. Yes, yeah, but, pasties. yeah, but even <laughs> you know, like even courtesy robes. <laughs> yeah, but even like beyond that, I mean, just knowing that like that we did this on. Um, I did um, a I line produced and bless you. And, bless you. and worked as the senior producer on a, a it was a experimental. Um, we were testing experimental technology, AI technology, and um, because of that. Uh, it was it, the the technology is being trained to uh, catch problematic uh, language in like uh, social media and things like that. So what we, we we were hired to do was to bring in actors to um, to recreate violent, aggressive, um, sometimes uh, you know tr really really triggering scenarios. And they were professional actors and they knew what they were doing, but it was like. It was one thing that, that would have probably never happened 10 years ago. We had these meetings about what we're going to do before and after. We had an intimacy coordinator, which isn't for intimacy in that scenario. It's just for, like, the fact that... Preventing is, harm. Yeah, this is a really, really triggering subject matter, and we want to make sure that everybody is psychologically okay after going through this exercise, from the actors who are doing it to the people witnessing it. Yeah. Um, and that's so critical, and that's something that like, I think I would have even thought to do if I hadn't been an actor and been in situations like that in the that's, past. That never would have happened in the 90s. No, no, it never would have. In the 90s, just have. go do your thing. Although like, we wouldn't yeah. be testing AI technology no, in the 90s no, either, true, so true. to be fair. True, true. Um, now that we've bored you with all the behind-the-scenes stuff, no, I'm sorry, the technical jargon, yeah. I kid um I, I i do want to know though so you've 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 been on all these horror movies and you've made a bunch of horror movies what is the favorite for both of you what's the favorite uh horror death that you've been a part of or you've created on your own oh. i have died so many times <laughs> no, I, I hear that so often <laughs> <laughs> i'm practicing for the big one that's a good question I don't know. I mean, I have died quite a few times. I don't know. I think 
it's probably a toss up between two. Um, one, um, she gets a, I don't know if she's actually dead to be honest, but she gets a bone hour through the cheek and then runs. And it was just my first time doing like a real stunt sequence where like, so she's running and um, the killer comes and like flips her. And so that was my first time doing like a real like stunt sequence like that. And I was doing it with a bunch of professional wrestlers who are like, who are, in, who are incredible stunt performers. That is their job. And it was just so much fun. Like, I think we just had so much fun doing that. Um, and I was definitely a little bit nervous because it was my first time doing something like that on camera. So um, I think I, I like that one. If she's dead, I don't know if she is. Um, and then... Uh, uh, I haven't actually seen the final version of this movie, so I don't know if the film is good. I think it, it probably is. Um, <laughs> but um, but uh, I did a cameo. I came back for a cameo um, in Shakespeare's Shitstorm, which is uh, uh, Lloyd's most recent film after Newcomb Highs. It's a, a take on The Tempest. And um, in spoilers, but like in, in the opening scene in true, like Pat fucked up passing of the torch Lloyd style, but he has the lead from his last film, Kill Herself, in the lead in the opening uh, act of the second film and I do a little Shakespeare and blow my brains out not that I'm encouraging anyone to unalive themselves <laughs> but I but I just liked the like um, passing of the torch kind of, yeah. of nature of it yeah, yeah one of mine would probably be getting hit by a train in Bye yeah. Bye Man spoiler alert but it's not really because it's in the trailer but uh, my other one would probably be and I, similarly I don't know if, if they actually die but there's a music video I did for an artist called Des Rocks. The name of the song is This Is Our Life. And it's just me fighting five dudes for several minutes on end. And it's very violent and fun. And at the end, there's kind of an implication that I reach the final boss who's the artist. And there's this sort of like ego death moment. And it's ambiguous as to whether or not I'm like have ascended and it's very artsy and weird. And there are a lot of horror homages in it. There's an homage to old boy. There's a lot of kind of oh, nice. sprinkles. Um, I just want to say after a few of the things you've said here today um, I'm quite certain you could kick my ass as well I could uh, I, it's, <laughs> but I wouldn't you're very nice I just love that I love that they're just like oh yes qu quite definitely <laughs> give it a while yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody else have any other questions here alright what you got there Uh, there's a man, his name is Damien. <laughs> He's got a table out there. He's the guy to talk to about that. And then secondly, I've always had a laugh at this. It's really random. But I love the pizzeria scene at the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that the pizza looks like dog shit. So I want to know, does it taste better than how it looks? No. <laughs> <laughs> so originally, that was actually supposed to be a hamburger place. But we were both vegetarian at the time, so Damien changed it to be a pizza place. Now we're both vegan, so I don't know if we would have just, hey, see, now I definitely won't beat your ass. <laughs> yeah, what's up? But, but, I'm feeling so weak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get those, that protein. Yeah, so I don't know if now we did it, if we'd be eating like falafel or something. Yeah. <laughs> that would actually be amazing if we did it at like a falafel part <laughs> yeah. instead. Yes. Uh, I, I don't remember, like, again, we were vegetarian, so I don't, like, we don't, wouldn't have, I don't remember, like, if the pizza... It, uh, it wasn't it. warm. No. I mean, we were shooting that scene for like 12 hours. But I do remember it was a functioning pizza place yeah. in New York. So like the quality of pizza in general is, is far superior to anywhere else. Um, but they, um, I say this as a former New Yorker, yeah. but, um, but, the, but I, I think we were probably pretty relieved to be eating pizza because again, resources very scarce. For a lot of times we were served like eggs and potatoes. Uh, like donuts. That, that was we like our that was lot. like our normal food on the set of that yeah. film. So I think we were probably pretty relieved to just have something different, regardless of how it tasted. <laughs> yeah. But you are right that there is obviously a supernatural element that's been introduced into yeah. the universe and so anything is possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Whoa, slow down guys. Yeah, wait, not all at once. Not My everybody goodness. at one time. <laughs> Jesus. All right. You guys have any questions for me? No. I'm, 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 I'm 
so kidding. How I'm long sorry. have you been a vegan? Um, I've been vegan. Uh, it'll be three years. Uh, actually, awesome. this next month. Happy anniversary. Yeah, happy anniversary. And not only that, because you all want to know about me, I'm sure. Uh, next month, not only is my three-year anniversary, uh, I am going to have my first grandchild next month. Oh, what? Yeah. So exciting. I'm sorry. Aren't you Papa like 40? Zeus. What is this? Oh, thank you. You are so kind. <laughs> I'm uh, no, confused is no, what I am. Uh, um, it's uh, that famous condition of black don't crack. I, uh, I've heard about that. Yes, 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 yes. I can't relate, but um, I've heard about it. Thank you. Thank you. You, you got it over there. Um, um, yeah, there's there's that, and you know, it's either me and Asians. We they they don't age, and neither do we. So no, um, I I'm I'm, I'm aging I'm, rapidly. Yeah. <laughs> every, time, well, every time, every no. time, <laughs> yes. every time we have to talk to Damien about Terrifier, we lose ten years. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we age ten years. I'm just kidding. Is, uh, I'll ask a question to the, the to the fans here. Is terif- where is Terrifier for you guys in the scope of scariest movies you've watched? Is it a top five? Top three. Top three. Damn. Now, uh, is it is it really? the scare or the gore? It's both. Oh, it's oh, bo- wow. She's like, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, I did talk to a friend of ours, and he was saying on the scope of thing, like there's a lot of funny parts of it, but I had conversations with other fans, and they were saying Damien got a lot of his thing. Like, oh, now you make me watch those movies because. Now I'm interested on the fact of thing, but before before watch Terrifier, I had a lot of horror genres that I wanted to get into, uh-huh. and I would say Terrifier is like on the top. Yeah, I'd say probably the top two at this point. Wow, well, thank you. It's it's interesting because I I mean you asked about subgenres earlier. I'm proud of Terrifier, but to be totally honest, it's not typically the type of subgenre that I watch I of horror. Yeah. Like honestly, one one of the movies I find scary. Well, my favorite horror movie is John Carpenter's The Thing, but my the one that scares me the most is the first Paranormal Activity. That's terrifying. Really? Like, you? Like, I had, wow. I had, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm impressed. I had paranormal experiences myself. So I see. Me, that was just... That was chump like, change. Yeah. You're like, this is kindergarten <laughs> shit. Like, 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 there was a party at my house and I was watching it and they were like, I was like sitting on the couch, I was like, no, I'm on the floor. I'm like, That's probably not the best environment to watch that film yeah, in, though, to be fair. I was fair. watching it and I was just like, everyone's like, I'm scared. I was just like, and then I fell asleep for that one. Well, I've had all the beverages that night. Cause it was like, <laughs> sure. So then I was sitting there and I was like, and I was like, they're poking me. I was like, what the hell? And I was like, they're poking me. I was like, I literally got up. I was like, what? I mean, I guess if you've been, f- if you're followed by demons in your everyday life, it's yeah. not super scary. What what movie well, you know is one of the ones that scares you the most? Oh gosh, um, I think the one that really got me when the first big scare I ever had when I was like a little kid was Leprechaun. I know that's like such a <laughs> weird. Jennifer Aniston. Weird, no, she's in the sequel, but oh. you know what I mean. But but like but, but you know like I I just was really little and there was something about like the nail that he dragged his nail across uh, and I just like that was I know that sounds really weird but that's the first time I ever remember like feeling. Like a visceral yeah. react, like a um, physical reaction. And there's reaction. other things that get me now, but like that was the one first. So I think that, and I still don't like to watch it for that reason. But you know, it's, we, I, and again, thank you for opening this up for another shameless plug. Um, <laughs> we should keep you, we should keep you on salary. Yeah. Um, no, but I'm, fear is such a like really fascinating thing, right? Because it's so unique to the individual and like what's terrifying for some person is not terrifying for somebody else. And it's so interesting, the psychosis that makes that. And I uh, have a podcast about exactly that uh, called Scream Dreams that launches... So this um, is the point where you all go into your... <laughs> it launches on uh, oh, November yeah. 15th, but uh, Fangoria just dropped the teaser for it. It's myself, Barbara Crampton, and James A. Janice from Dead Me and a bunch of other amazing horror filmmakers. Where we what? just talk Scream about... Dreams? Scream Dreams? Scream Dreams. At Scream Dreams Pod. <laughs> that's the one but yeah it's uh yeah that's it right. um but we just talked to other genre filmmakers about what actually scares them their nightmares and what actually scares them and i i'm it's been fascinating to hear like what gets people and sometimes it's funny and sometimes it really is terrifying is it with, an S or with oh yes. scream dreams no with an s that would i i didn't think about it that that would have been really cool <laughs> <laughs> that would really cool i've i've done Oh, well, I apologize. <laughs> you, we, we need to hire you. We do need some social media help. We need to hire you. You already got her as a oh, client, though. You can't I know, I know. Boss. I can't. You know, I'll this is, this is what we're talking you. about, division of labor. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, actually, I see I see this as the start of the next. Uh, oh, my God, this is a horror movie. Rehire the assistant who ends up being the one that takes you all out. Oh, does she oh, give you that thought, that vibe, the mask? 
Just kidding. Wait, what what movie know. scares you, Zeus? What movie scares me? Uh, my wedding video? No. Uh, 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 oh, uh, no. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's um, dead now. No, no. <laughs> no, no. We've been divorced for years. Um, um, <laughs> it's funny because it's Chill. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm the biggest earmuffs uh, pussy on the planet. I hate horror movies. Uh, my How mother, did they give you this job? Because <laughs> they always make me host the panels here. Um, I, I, my mother showed me The Exorcist when I was five. Oh, no. And it was so bad. Do, do you guys remember um, the old Incredible Hulk show where it would Bill Bixby? Every time when he would change into the Incredible Hulk, I would lose my shit because his eye, he'd have the same contact lenses <laughs> that Reagan had. And I would, so my mom, would, she'd be like, I want to smoke dope with her friends and stuff. And she'd be like, hey, we got the Incredible Hulk going on. And I would lock myself in the bathroom for like an hour. Um, oh but yeah, Fear is so funny. Right? <laughs> yes, and my children scare me. Um, but, and that one's true. Um, but no, my, my uh, co-host over there, tell you, uh, I, he's the horror fanatic and uh, uh, but he's but there's horror movies I guess that I watched that I didn't know are horror movies like Event Horizon I don't yeah. look at that as a horror movie but I'm a sci-fi nerd so and there's but I think it's all like again there's always different subgenres like like she asked about like mm. there's like supernatural horror there's fantasy horror there's yeah. like you know and there are things that are terrifying to me that like are not horror films like Requiem for a Dream scared the Ooh. shit out yeah. of me and that is not a horror movie you know what I mean so I think there's like yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I also hate feet. Terrifying. Hate them. You know? So <laughs> you never there's a, I was about to say Tarantino watched. joke. Insert Tarantino <laughs> no. joke here. Yeah. No, I, no, I have. I hate it. Like, yeah. Anyway. There was a question Sorry. here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's our friend. Yeah, our friend yes. with that. He's he, here. He here? Yeah, the artist so is that here. artist, that was a fan art, and he would. Pro I, I may be telling this wrong. I don't think he's in this room right now. But um, so he made that early days of Terrifier, yeah. like when we before the second one, I think had even been announced, and um, ever we liked it. Everyone liked it so much um, that I think Damien or and Phil decided to make it a comic book, and he is the artist Steve of that McGinnis. comic book. Steve oh, McGinnis. He's downstairs. Yeah. The same guy. He's downstairs yeah, he's right that. now. And get this. <laughs> Table 510, he's really lovely. And you know what's also really interesting is, and I didn't even know this, 10 years ago, he illustrated the very first cover of a magazine I was ever on. Which yeah, was it was called Gore Noir Magazine. Oh, I don't know yeah, if it's still sense. around, but yeah, he did it. He did it. He, he's yeah. a great artist. Yeah. Um, he hosts a podcast, a horror podcast, where they like they have titles. You guys, that's his co-host, his other co-host. Oh. My, my How many podcasts do you co-host, sir? <laughs> Two yeah, severed two severed heads. It's a Tyler good name. Maine. Now Tyler we're going to go around and everyone's going to do one shameless plug. Yes. Uh, yeah. Tyler Main will be on next week, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, Bad Boys 4 comes out next year. Now <laughs> I feel like I have to say it. Um, and, I'm not joking. I'm in it. And uh, <laughs> the, the, recreate, the third recreation of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I'll be there as Uncle Phil. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not joking about Bad Boys 4. No, she really oh, is I'm genuinely in it. Don't fuck with me. No, I'm she not. is. It's not a joke. <laughs> It's on IMDb. Right? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. You weren't in three, though. No. No, no, okay. No. Yeah, I was like, because I Just know four. I watched that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know I watched that one. I know I smoke a lot of cigarettes. I don't smoke no, cigarettes. No, that's it's worse. Horrible. That was a terrible save. Don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> this is, these guys are like, we heard that joke in the last panel. Stop it. Wow. They followed me know. over. It's I'm important sorry. to have people that hold you accountable yeah, and keep is. you humble. Yeah, it <laughs> they is. Are. And are in every panel. I know. I feel, I, um, so let's get it back to you, ladies, <laughs> as, as you will. Um, um, I have nothing. What, what, uh, guys, give me something here. What is your favorite horror movie? John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, yeah, did we that. Do that, huh? And Alien. Alien's also excellent. I love the Alien franchise. All right. I'm curious Riddle me this. as opposed to what, <laughs> what music you're into and the last band that you've seen live and the one that you're looking forward to seeing. Oh. oh. I don't think we've ever been asked this on no, a No, that is a good We one. do have other interests. How kind of you to yeah. ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are fully fledged human beings, yes. I, my, well, I'm trying to think about the last one because I, okay, everything I could, is blurred together, but I'm very eclectic. I like a lot of, I like a lot of things. Um, so I don't have like, I don't have like a favorite genre. I'm like super eclectic to the point where like I listen to metal, but like also hip hop and also have, you know, my affinity for pop music and like whatever else weird, obscure French folk bands. Like it's just very strange. So, um, but I'm pretty sure 
and I'm not 100% sure about this, but I'm pretty sure the last band that I saw live was with Ice Jenna Ice Nine, our friends Ice Nine Kills. Yeah, we did their convention um, and we got to go to the show. Yeah, and it was very they, cool. No, they're they're amazing. Um, so good. They're one of the best live shows you'll ever go to, 100%. And I actually, um, I'm good friends with, well, we, we both are good friends with them. And um, I got to see them prior to that, only a few weeks prior, with Metallica. And I mean, Metallica was unreal, was like a bucket list band for me to see live. But Ice Nine, I mean, they they are, uh, the theatrics, it is so good. Like, yeah, especially if you like horror movies. Yeah. They're clearly huge nerds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, my favorite band is The War on Drugs. Nice. Okay, cool. Nice. Do you know who the last concert I saw was? I'd have to say this. It, it was, was Taylor Swift, wasn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking beautiful. I saw the Fugees with Lauren Hill. Oh, that was wow. Wow. incredible. She, I'm pretty sure, is also vegan. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Lenny Kravitz, too. Oh, yeah. I didn't know he was. We're He's growing in nice power. Dude. Living out in Hawaii. Very good. <laughs> Dude, oh, you know, you know, my I feel favorite. Like all these vegans up here. My favorite, Sorry, wrong my colors. favorite band is actually probably. <laughs> if I had right. to pick, it would probably be a toss up between. And this is really like cheesy, but the Rolling Stones and Fleetwood Mac. And that's just because mm. my parents are like, my dad is a chef, and they like raised me on that. And he was the Stones chef for a while, and like, oh. so they're just like kind of a. Uh, only when they were in Philly. Only when they would. Yeah. Only when they would come into Philly. He doesn't do it anymore. I, like, but it was like that. That my parents are big. Like. Um, and they're just and eating food. applesauce now, anyway. No, no, no. Like it's it's weird. They're just they're no. It, oh, that's sad. Don't say that. Um, but they like, no. My parents are big like classic rock like nerds. They play trivia games about it, and like that was one of the things. That's how they met. Um, my mom was trying to sneak into the Rolling Stones after party, and my dad was like, "I'm the chef, and I still can't get you in." Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I can get you into my life. Uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh. Nice. Well, that's awesome. Um, all right, got some looks over there. Not sure if we're at the time there. Um, and my favorite band, in case you didn't want to know. Yeah, yeah come on, Zeus. What, what is, what is oh, your yeah, favorite sorry, band? No, 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 no. I'm, uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, Pink Floyd and oh, the Beatles, cool. probably. I saw Pink Floyd in London at Live Aid. I swear to God. I'm Are you trying to one up me right now, sir? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, this is no, the no, most I'm interactive I'm panel I've ever been a part of. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's hilarious. I'm so sorry. <laughs> They did not warn you about Zeus, did they? <laughs> they no, no. were like, there's this guy, he hates horror movies. Give him a chance. <laughs> Give him a chance. He's, he's vegan. It's fucked up. That scene, oh my God, it is a dark movie. I saw it with somebody that was like even crazier because they're doing weird fucking drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never picked that. The movie is dark. I have seen the movie. You're talking about Terrifier? Yeah. I'm just checking. Oh, it wasn't true. There's a lot of dark films. <laughs> Bad Boys 4. We're actually talking about Bad Boys 4. She long black hair and then she is like tied up. I've seen Of course I've seen it. They, I'm so glad you explained because they had never seen it. Yeah. I, yeah. With the people who haven't seen it, you're going to be very confused. There's a chick in a skeleton costume. It's me. I'm, I have hair at the time and I'm wearing about 15 pounds of makeup. So I'm gonna, you're going to be like, I don't remember that bald bitch from the panel. <laughs> Where is she in this movie? But if you want to hear something cool about that Live Aid show you were at, so was my father. Um, weirdly, I know I don't talk about my dad all that much, but he um, he was uh, one of there. So there's a lot of chefs backstage for Live Aid, and the story goes that um, well, it's not the story; it's just what he said happened. Um, so there were so they all have all those bands, biggest bands in the world at the time, have different riders and different needs and different dietary things, and so and you have to reset really, really quickly. So he had all this like crepe paper on the tables, and as he'd have to reset to get different food things and whatever, he would just like quick rip the crepe paper off so he wouldn't have to redo the setup and put all the new food items down, and he would tear a piece of the uh, cra the crepe paper off and have each band sign it and oh, in cool. my house um, from that Live Aid show is um, framed or four frames of all the different pieces of crepe paper with different signatures on it. Only two are still intact because when my sister was in high school, she threw a party and one broke and now it's moldy. Oh. Uh, but but <laughs> I know. But that's but yeah, that's like um, that was what was happening backstage, just chaos. Okay, I'm stupid chaos. curious. I got to know what the bands were. At the at the Live Aid in London? No, no, the the, the signed the signed ones. Oh, um, the signed gosh. ones that you had. So Do you he, remember? He has Queen, 
Um, Which was, that was big, that was Freddie's big comeback, right? Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to think Looking at me, I don't know. <laughs> She's like, I was two. I just work here. I was two. I, I, I don't know if it was a comeback, but it was a very famous performance. Yeah. That's like, that's um, the, hey, oh, yeah, hey. that, yeah. yeah. Um, he has that. I'm trying <laughs> yeah, he has, we have George Michael. Um, he has a lot of bands that like I didn't know were I have to look at it again. Yeah, yeah. they were there. Definitely you 2 um, he doesn't have Elton, I don't think. I don't know. I'd have to look at it again. Um, but yeah, it's in our basement somewhere. You know, I went to the one in like 2005, not the one you're talking about. No, 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 not the 2005. What I'm is happening right now? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is this still a panel? There was two. There Where was one in I? London and one in Philadelphia. <laughs> Oh, that's what you were talking about. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about. I thought you were talking about Live Aid, like in the '80s, the one that like. I didn't know there was um, one. I'm so sorry. I, so I just told you a story oh that you God. did not give a shit about. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, I just ha I just have to say, as we uh, we we wrap this up here, folks. Or as we unwind. Unwind. And unravel. Has this been the weirdest <laughs> panel you've ever been a part of? Yes. Um, has this been the most fun panel you've been a part of? We like to bring you the good what? vibes, you know? <laughs> I like when they give us the Jenna and Catherine show. Uh, yeah, it's very strange. We're not totally sure why we're on a different panel from David and Damien. Oh, uh, they're on their own panel tomorrow. Uh, I, I'm sure it's most going to be people asking about Terrifier 3, which we have zero answers about. Oh, so right. That could be why. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're saving all those questions for tomorrow. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. But Ooh. we will be back for Comic-Con and Talking Bad Boys 4. Well, if the strike is over, yes. yes. Oh, we're in Canada. You can't do it here? No. No. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're still in the union there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the strike is we're in favor. It's necessary. Yes. It's got to happen. It's long overdue. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for supporting. Right. Folks, hope you had a good time. Big round of applause. Thank you all so much. Thank you for watching movies so we can keep making them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Zeus. Thank you. This is great. This has been a nutty ride. You guys are great. <laughs>